I couldn't hear it. Oh, it was too loud. Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling Design Show. I'm Keith, along with a scared Morgan. Oh my goodness. There it is. Whoa. Ugh, he turned the thing on way too loud. <laughs> she jumped out of her chair. <laughs> I saw Jeremy over there. <laughs> Jumping too, right? <laughs> you know, what was that? Oh <laughs> is there God. thunder outside? I bet you were thinking, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was just me uh, having headphones on and turning on the on the outside speaker. Oh, that was ridiculous! Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I jumped a foot. It and... didn't scare me because these things really insulate the sound. Well, it's good to be with y'all this Saturday, and we hope you're enjoying your Saturday. And thank you for joining us on the KM Builder Remodeling and Design Show. And we're going to be talking about home maintenance projects. Uh, it's that time of year where you might um, might be off from work. Yep. You might want to either do some of these things yourself or hire someone to do it. It's usually a good time to do it. I always think of certain projects that need to be done annually. I always think of doing them when the new year starts. That sounds kind of silly, but I guess that's the way our brains work sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do an annual project at the beginning of the year or the end of the year. And then you won't forget. And then you don't forget. So I try to use the end of the year as a reminder to take care of things that are supposed to do annually. Mm -hmm. Maybe you were the same way. And we wanted to do our remodeling safe tip, but first we are live on Facebook and Instagram, so just search for KM Builders. And if you were watching, you would have seen me jump out of the chair. Yeah, you would you would have enjoyed that too. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you would have enjoyed seeing Morgan jump like that. Um, but our remodeling safe tip is uh, if you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, you'll know why I'm saying this. But it is to don't try and do the risky business move on your newly refinished floors because that's what dad did and he <laughs> fell flat on his face last <laughs> well, on about, Tuesday, I think, I, I think I was vlog. about an inch from hitting my face because I caught myself with my hands, but I mean it was quick, wasn't it? And loud and hard. And we're getting a lot of um, comments and views from that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh they caught goodness. it on camera, which was, you know, is a rare thing. I do dumb things regularly, but... Uh, it's not always caught on camera. Yeah, this but time this it time is. it was, and Nana w was so upset. <laughs> I texted Nana, and she was like, "Oh my goodness, he gave me a heart attack, because it is loud." But uh, it's a funny video, and just those remodeled, um, newly refinished floors are slick until they're not, because there was a sticky spot. <laughs> That's right. And if y'all would like to ask any questions or. You know, get some advice. That's what we're here for. We would love to take uh, keep you from making a mistake. We have a lot of years' experience in this, especially uh, me. I'm on having done this for many, many years. We would definitely like to keep you from making a mistake. And a lot of times, people will call somebody else to work on your home. And let me just throw out there: seven three seven twelve hundred is the number. Seven three seven twelve hundred. And a lot of people on will. The show. Yeah, but a lot of people will call someone and they'll sell them a solution or sell them a a product or you know something that they thought that they wanted <clears throat> but actually they don't need that and so sometimes people do not realize that you know you can get some outside advice for free that will tell you whether that's even what you really want or not mm -hmm. so we want we want to definitely help you with that a good example of that is like if you say you're you need a new water heater you'll get a new water heater from a plumber but if what you really have is not getting hot water to all places of the home that's not going to be solved by a hot water heater so let me know if you're having problems <laughs> like that we can uh, give you some free advice of course we are into the bigger projects as well not just home home maintenance but I thought today we kind of take a um, detour from what we normally talk about, the larger types of remodeling projects, and just remind folks to do some of that maintenance in their homes. And one of the first one that comes to mind when we're talking about maintenance in the winter is a fireplace. So what do you have to do? Well, fireplaces need to be maintained. 
the clean. first what like clean clean yeah and sometimes you know if we have full masonry fireplaces the fire brick on the inside needs to be inspected by a professional you can look at it too but you can um you know you put your face up into the flue to look at it. it's not easy to do and you're probably going to get a little dirty Lots so most people will just let a professional do that and uh, Roland Pettis is the guy that I recommend for that. And if you ever need his number, just look us up and we'll give you a good fireplace maintenance man <laughs> who does chimney cleaning as well. But you, you do need to look at the condition of your chimney. And especially if you move into a new home, maybe it's new to you, but it's had a fireplace for a while, mm -hmm. then, then you would want to get your chimney inspected. And every year you should have, um, if you're using wood or even the fake wood, that you know the little logs like they the burn gas? they burn really hot no the gas is a little different oh. but if you're using anything that produces soot off of the residual off the smoke that's coming off that's going to need to be cleaned otherwise you can have what's called a chimney fire and if you don't know what a chimney fire looks like or if you've ever heard of one go look it up go look up chimney fires google chimney fires and i tell you you will be shocked at what the damage it can do because once that fire gets in there, it starts burning all of this this uh, sap and soot that's on there, and it can literally catch your house on fire. But let's go ahead and take our question um, a caller. If you're ready, we can go ahead and take Joel. Good afternoon. I am um, installing uh, granite countertops in my kitchen, and we have a bar area, you know, that butts up against that. We're lowering the bar area. And you're gonna have the, the sink countertop just completely flat uh, that extends to the length of the bar uh, with the overhang there. My question is, I have a an outlet in the backsplash of the sink countertop near the end of the counter, and I'm thinking about moving that um, outlet to the <clears throat> to the four inch wide section that's on the end of the bar wall. Uh, the problem is um, there's three two by four studs at the end. Okay. And so I'm wondering how do I, you know, put that in there without completely cutting those um, two by fours, but still getting through all of those for the wiring. Well, that's a great question. And it's a, it's not a, it's not an island, right? Uh, correct. It's not an aisle. Okay, so, I mean, typically you can cut sheetrock out and you can drill the, all of those studs with a long bit. And you, and you, yeah, and you can do that. Now, sometimes the bit is so long that you can't get in there at the right angle. You don't want to use a bit that's excessively large um, because, you know, if you're doing, if you have to do it at an angle, it's going to use up more of that, that studs. So keeping it the right the right diameter is the key there. Get it get it a little bit bigger than your wire, and typically like a three quarter or one inch will do that. And you drill that in with a paddle bit, as far all through all those studs, and again open up the sheetrock on the other side is usually the easiest way to do that. It's usually going to be required anyway, and you run that wire up, make a couple of drywall repairs. It's usually the way to do it. Now, if you can do it from the cabinet side, you can actually cut open the cabinet and repair that. Put a little Put that piece of panel, the back of the cabinet, is a, is going to be a lot. See, I'm actually going to be able to do it directly from the side. I mean, I have all the paneling off from under the bar. We're going to replace that with sheetrock rock anyway. So the wiring is exposed, and I can see the three wood studs, uh, the two by four studs. But I'm going to uh, the end of the wall is where I'm going to. Um, mount the electrical outlet so I can just go straight in from the outside uh, you know the, the wall there okay great so if you're going to drill what you want to do is make sure that you're drilling in the center for a couple of reasons one is you want to make sure that when you put sheetrock back or anything or somebody else does it uh, later on attaching stuff to the wall it doesn't penetrate that wire if you get too close to the edge of the stud, then you should put a metal strap on it so that it deflects any nails that are trying to go through that that could ever penetrate that wire. And so stay in the center, you'll be fine because sheetrock nails are not that long and nobody should be driving really large nails into a wall like that to hang anything. 
So you'll be good there. You go up, up the wall, back up to the height you want. Um, that should work. Now, what you need to do if the wire is not long enough is make a junction box. And that means, that means tying the two wires together in a receptacle that can be accessed from either the inside of the cabinet or the outside of the wall. And if it's the outside, you just make a cover plate, put a blank plate on it, it looks fine. And, but you have to have that legally, you have to have access to that for if there's ever a short or a change, you can, you can get to it. So, all right, that, that, really, that really is a good question and I hope you so, wish you success with that. Thanks for calling the KM Builders Remodeling Design Show. And we are just about ready to take a break and we're gonna go ahead and talk about the ones who clean all of our projects and that is the maids. They are the official cleaning service of KM Builders. Morgan uses them, my dad uses them and call them at 210-822-822. 2526. Dirk is a great guy running a great company there. Look him up at themaids.com forward slash 211. And don't forget, you can use code KM Builders for $25 off your first clean. And we'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling Design Show. Do you think all vitamin C is so loud? Is that how I talk to you? What? It is not. Is there a TB I hear you talk about? Where is that? Thanks for taking the calls like that. That, that. that works great. I don't think we have to. Oh, yeah, you do. We have to have it on. something wrong here. Now I can't hear. Odd at Barbecue Outfitters and it's time for our giant holiday sale. Barbecue Outfitters is your holiday gift giving headquarters for all the men and women in your Robin said, you scared me. <laughs> oh my goodness.
Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith, along with Morgan. Hello, everybody. And we are glad to be with you this Saturday, and we're taking your calls live at 737-1200. We'd love to help you avoid making a mistake, or just make it easier for you, or give you some good direction on where to go. And that's 737-1200. I mentioned that. No, no, no you didn't. didn't. All right. Yeah, I wanted to mention our sponsor that we're glad to have with us, and that is Elite Lighting Designs. And Sean over there runs a very tight ship and really a great company with great guys that do such a great job on installing outdoor lighting, whether it's holiday lighting, just regular accent lighting, uh, up lighting on a home. These things we've had we've had some of these done at our home, and I tell you the the way they even trench, they don't even tear up your yard. Yeah, they the just grass, like fold it right. They actually just slice a little slice, lift it up, and then push it right back down. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's a really neat process to watch them, but it can make a beautiful difference in your home. Yeah. So we recommend Elite Lighting Designs at EliteLightingDesigns.com, or call them at five seven three. 0594 that's 210 573 0594 or elite lighting designs.com and it looks like we have our first question so we'll go ahead and take our first caller of this hey, segment hey bob how can we help you hey well first thank you for taking my call i really enjoy your show you have a lot of good advice uh i've got a problem i've got a house that was built back in the late 50s and it's got the asbestos vinyl tiles floor tiles and i was wondering if, if i overlay that with a composite flooring at some point in the future when the house is inspected like to have it sold are they going to tell me because i've got those asbestos vinyl tiles still underneath the flooring that i will have to remove everything the problem by doing an overlay no you've actually solved the problem and, and, and actually, technically, vinyl asbestos tile, the VAT, is not really a problem. It, uh, people are very afraid of asbestos because it can cause problems if it's created, uh, grounded to a dust. But asbestos by itself, I mean, um, it is, first of all, it's a naturally occurring mineral. And second of all, you could eat it and it wouldn't hurt you at all. I mean, I wouldn't have recommended excessive amounts of it because it might have, have uh, not help do good with your digestion, but it's, it's an inert material that um, will not poison you in any way, except if you get it into your lungs. And so it's not a problem, and it's not even required by any codes that it be taken out. It's not allowed to be, to be used in manufacturing anymore, but it's not illegal technically to have it in your home. What we, what we want to do is if we have to take it out, we take it out because we want to get down to the bare floors, but we do it in a way that is safe. We do not grind it up. We try not to chip it into small particles, and we never sand it or abrade it. That's called um, non-friable. We want to keep it non-friable. And, and so what, we, what we'll do with, with that in most cases, if it's, if it's stuck down really good and it's not coming up, that's a perfect surface to lay another product like an LVP floor, and even many tile setters know how to bond to a really good floor like that and go right over it with tile. So you don't have any problems with going over it unless it's loose, unless it's not sticking to the floor, and that's really all you have to worry about. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, great question, and thanks for calling the show. So today we're gonna to be talking a little bit more about home maintenance. But and I have a client testimonial. I can do you. it. Thank you. <laughs> it is, we got this a couple days ago, and it's in a text, and it says, Thanks, Keith. David was the best and certainly is diplomatic in his ways. He helped smooth my ruffled feathers on more than one occasion. Overall, it was a good experience, and we are absolutely pleased with our end project. And isn't that what it's all about? You have some amazing tradesmen working for you, professional, skilled, and committed. I enjoyed getting to know them when they were here often. The painters, Erasmo, Miguel, and Manuel, carpenters, Rudy, Daniel, and Renee, and tilers, Daryl and Derek, and electrician, Justin. They are all perfectionists, and I enjoyed watching them do their thing. <laughs> yeah, and isn't that, 
Isn't that wonderful? I'm so glad that you remember to bring out these things about our wonderful staff so that they get some recognition on the radio. Yeah. And thanks to all of our great clients that truly appreciate them. So we want to talk a little bit about home maintenance. In the winter, as we said, chimneys are a must. You must have your chimneys clean because they can be extremely dangerous if they're not. There's some other things that, that you might want to do at this time of year. Smoke alarms come to my mind. Changing those batteries in the smoke alarms. And you can see if you haven't done that, uh, unfortunately, we've seen people die in San Antonio. Even some prominent citizens have died due to fires. And the reason was, is because yep. the, the smoke alarms didn't go off. The thing is, is that we don't know when, whenever a fire is happening, typically in our homes, because the smoke is the first thing that kills us. And, and you, can, you can breathe that smoke while you're sleeping and you'll never wake up. Yeah, it's and so sad. It's so sad, yeah. And so people don't burn to death. They they usually get asphyxiated, asphyxiated first due to smoke inhalation. And a less serious problem of doing your smoke alarm with batteries, you know, doing them preemptively is you won't get woken up in the middle of the night when they decide to chirp to let you know that That's they're right. low on their batteries. That can be very inconvenient. Oh, yeah. Because they don't you, do it during the day. It's yeah. always at night. That's right. <laughs> Even if you have uh, wired smoke alarms, the battery is a backup that should be changed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and speaking of electrical components, there's another big one that, that you should, should be aware of. If you have any type of aluminum wiring, you should have that, the electrical connections redone, uh, tightened up, and have the little uh, jelly put on those so that they make a good connection because they can spark, they can overheat, and they can cause fires, especially aluminum. How but often but do even you? even copper wiring every few years should be tightened up. Okay. All of the connections. Now annually on, on aluminum wiring, oh. and and um, you should go every two to five years, five, at least every five years on copper, because it can cause sparking, and I've actually seen it in my house. So you want to tighten those down about once every five years to make sure that they're not getting. But what happens is is they expand and contract. All, all metal expands and contracts, and, and a little copper expands and contracts more than steel, and aluminum expands and contracts more than copper. And so that's why it's now no longer allowable to use aluminum throughout the main parts of the home. However, you can still use aluminum for the big, big heavy wires that come in from the outside, and from the outside panel to the inside panel, you can still you know, many homes still have aluminum there because copper is really expensive. And so you need those checked annually. So that's another another thing you want to do on home maintenance. But um, we really, really recommend that you do some of these things. And we're going we're gonna to have a bunch more things that you can add to your list. But if we want to remind you that when we come back from the break, that you can call us at 737-1200. That's 210-737-1200. And... We want to speak about our new sponsor that we're happy to have, Frank's Paint and Body Shop. Now, we all end up getting dings on our cars, even our favorite ones, no matter how careful we are, rock chips and so forth. If you'd like that to go away, Frank is a specialist at matching paints where you cannot see. He can make it invisible. I know we had a deer hit ours <laughs> on our RX350, and it, you cannot find it. And so that's 210-927-3410. 927-3410, Frank's Paint and Body Shop, and just give us a call if you can't find his number. And we'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. This is News Radio 1200 W. Robin said, hey, Keith and Morgan, good show. I guess we didn't scare you off too bad, huh, Robin? Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> glad we didn't scare you off. <laughs> Look at that show. It's, so called, it's called Fat Guys in the Woods. <laughs> it's a show. I didn't know he was on there. I love that guy. I really, well, he's not a fat guy. No, but he's, he's probably their expert to show them how. He is so cool. I 
wish I had all his knowledge. I'm gonna start watching that show and taking it. That guy is in the woods. Uh huh. Because he's on. Look what he's doing. Sewing. Yeah, did you use a piece of a plant? I think a tree. Look at the plant. Okay, was that a rope? It's funny, bad guys in the woods. Doesn't matter, bored outside with like Evan. Evan and Riley. themselves. <laughs> Cute, right? Uh-huh. Little trap spot for insects. I really want to watch that. Start recording it. little shovel like that in my go bag. It's smart. So you put a little shelter over it and I guess they just fall in there and you can eat them later? I guess. One thing I don't have on my go bag is gloves. That would be pretty handy to have. Mm -hmm. I need to add that to my list. See how they're, they're cooking them? Mm -hmm. If you don't, you'll get you'll throw up later. You can eat them. Lower blood sugar by 46%. You can boil it. You can grill it or you can boil it. But you've got to cook it to get out. Bacteria? No, no, bacteria no. It's just, it's just too strong for your stomach, um, and it'll make you throw up, and maybe even some. Uh, sounds like diarrhea. it's like you should have cooked the royal jelly. <laughs> look at, look at, they seem to be enjoying it, right? Yeah. They say okay. they're pretty good, right? The mm -hmm. And I don't and, like it. And just, and just to survive, it'd be good to know, right? Mm-hmm. survive for you and be fairly comfortable too i mean literally be comfortable he shows how to make make you comfortable in any environment can't remember his name something about this big. Well, we have those um, reflective blankets. No. Yeah, I guess, but they're like, they're this big. Yeah. Those you are more, use that. That's to wrap yourself in. Yeah, I know, but you could use it to make no, no. a shelter, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. That'd be way too small to make a shelter. We have two. Yeah. Might help some. Yeah. I think one that folds out. 
a lot bigger would be smart to have. Let's see what the insects are. Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling <laughs> and Design Show. We're taking your calls live at 737 1200. That's 210 737 1200. And I want to mention our sponsor, BioGreen, at biogreensa.com. Uh, a lot of people know that I've been having Joe do, him and his crew do the maintenance on my lawn. Actually, it's the nutrient feeding fertilizing and killing the any type of fungus that grows the what do you call it um, before they they uh, arrive they they grow up before the weeds, the weeds? Come, yeah before they become weeds the I don't pre know <laughs> the pre emergence yeah pre emergence that's what I'm talking about so he has a really good system to take care of you at a fraction of the cost of other big companies that do similar things but he uses the synthetic and the natural the organic uh, feedings so it's a really good product that he offers and it's very reasonable at 210-421-9522 call him at 421-9522 or biogreensa.com so we're talking about what's trending with morgan <laughs> you always forget well we always do it at this time of year whenever pantone um uh, releases their color of the year so this year, it says the 2021 Color of the Year selection is not just one, but two. So they picked Ultimate Gray and Illuminating, which is like a bright yellow. And the reason is they said these hues, which seem starkly opposite, were intentionally chosen to create a balance of strength and optimism, two characteristics that are needed as we enter the new year. So I just thought I'd give a little update. That's what's trending right now, and strength and optimism as we enter 2021. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds sounds like a good thing to be trending. Yeah. And so we're talking about home maintenance to, to, to get your list done while you're off work, um, while you're thinking about the end of the year and starting a new year. It's a great time to get all these little things done. We mentioned your chimney, your fireplace needs to be maintained. It is not something you want to neglect year after year. Um, so smoke alarms, we mentioned, repair, replacing those batteries, checking to make sure they're in good order. Uh, another thing that- And that electrical. Some, and the electrical we mentioned also, right. The wiring connections being done, copper at least every five years and aluminum every year. Mm -hmm. And you, by the way, probably have some of both in your big panels. So. It's good to hire an electrician, and Ray Castro will do that for you. If you need his number, we'll be glad to give it to you. We also use DCDC electrical on our in our company, and we can recommend them as well. And some of the other things I think about is like locks. If you're using keys still, uh, and even if you're not, locks need to be lubricated with a dry lubricant. And when you have home ownership, you don't want to ever get locked out of your home. You don't want that to break on you. So just something as simple as a dry graphite lubricant in in your locks can make a big difference. By the way, I don't know if you've ever noticed how when you when you go to a lot of homes, you put the key in upside down. Have you ever noticed that? That almost all car keys, the old kinds, and, and all home locks, they're upside down. What they, do you mean well, upside down? Well, the teeth are up, okay. I should say. <clears throat> and... Sometimes you'll see it where the teeth are down because you step it in the lock. That's actually improperly installed. And the reason they're down is because you want any moisture to come out of the bottom and to, to drain out of that lock. Hmm. So you always want it at the, at the bottom where any moisture can collect at the bottom of that lock rather than getting up into the tumblers where it can affect the action of you getting your key in and out. At the bottom won't hurt it, but at the top will. So. That's just a little side note. And it also allows you to blow in that graphite uh, lubricant. You want to use a draw, some type of dry lubricant on locks. So that's another thing you want to do every year. Another good thing to check is what, speaking of doors, is weather stripping. Weather strips don't last forever. And there's two main types. One is the, the metal type mm -hmm. and the other is the rubber type. So the, more, the newer homes typically have rubber weather stripping 
that you as a homeowner can buy a new kit at a home at a Home Depot or Lowe's and can get them replaced. If you can, if you have a metal door, then you can get the ones that have a magnetic strip on them, and they seal to that that door really, really well. I recommend those. If not, you just get the foam type and keep those check for air gaps. You can look at it with at night with a light outside or even during the day if you turn off the indoor lights you can see if lights coming in check it and if lights coming in air is coming in mm -hmm. and so a lot of times you'll you'll think that the, you look at the weather strip and it looks like it's in good shape and one of the reasons it's in good shape is because it's not touching everywhere so you want to look on both sides and make sure you're getting you're getting a good seal. Now sometimes the door needs to be adjusted in or out at the top or bottom and that's done usually at the hinge side. There are some things you can do on the weather strip side but it's usually better to adjust that. And if you need a professional to do that, it's a good time to do it at the beginning of the year. The weather's getting cold and get those new weather strips. And the other type of weather strip is the aluminum or bronze, uh, brass, I'm sorry, brass weather strips. And those are really flexible and they really seal well, seal against the door really well when you close them. And if air's coming in, that means bugs can come in. That's what Morgan hates. <laughs> bugs coming in. Yeah, no thanks. And so so she she wants you to she wants to make sure hers are weather strip. She doesn't <laughs> care about the air, she cares about those bugs. Yeah. <clears throat> but somebody else might you know, need That's it right. too. <laughs> That's right. We don't need bugs inside. No. We need them outside where they can do their job. So that's another great reason, Morgan, to have weather strips installed. <laughs> and speaking of doors, your garage doors also need lubrication. Your hinges on your regular doors and your garage door wheels and rollers and tracks and even the chain needs, needs a lubricant. So use different lubricants for the, for the wheels than you do for the chain. Uh, in some cases, you can uh, see what yours has. Some of them have the crank screw shaft but there's a simple little lube that you can buy for all of that and spray it on and you're done done right. for the year and so so if you need any advice on that you can give us a call but we want to make sure that you it's horrible when your garage door acts up and you can't get in or out so so be mindful of that is maintaining not your garage door we depend on them so much oh, yeah. and in many cases the garage door gets used more than any other door in the house and it's worse when you can't get out. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can always park and use a different door to mm -hmm. get in. Yeah. So check your keys. Make sure you've got plenty of keys to get in. If you're not used to using it, um, you need to check your front porch and make sure everything's going over there. A lot of people don't walk into their houses ever from the front door. Mm -hmm. And so they need to check that front porch and make sure everything's in good order. If you see stains coming out of the overflow tube in the ceiling, of your patio or porch sometimes you'll see that there's been dripping occurring on that porch from the AC overflow tube and you need to know that that's not the main drain for the house that is an overflow tube the reason it's at your front door or your back door is because they want to t it's to, meant to alert you to the fact that something is going wrong with your unit oh. your primary your primary drain line is being clogged and so it's coming out the secondary drain line now and that is when you notice it and you're supposed to get the first one fixed don't continue to depend on that it will usually be very unsightly and it's stained your concrete your siding or both or your brick your stucco and that should not be happening so get rid of that problem right away and get that primary drain unclogged so that's that's some of the tips we wanted to share with you today. But I want before we go to the break, I want to mention a great sponsor we've had for quite a while at Expel. They do paint protective film and window tinting, and that that film can protect against UV rays. It can protect uh, from damaging your furniture and your flooring, clothing and closets, and so forth. But they also have films that reduce, that will still protect it, but still give you a lot of light. And those are high quality films that can do that. The installation is super important, and especially when you get the, the type of films that prevent you from being broken. Mm -hmm. Those protective films are incredible. So call them at 
That's 210-430-7712. Ask for Eric or go to xl.com. And we'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Try Parker for Car Zeus. What is Car Zeus? It's a car buying service allowing you to go to their website, carzeus.com, submit your vehicle information in a matter of minutes, and get a quote to purchase your vehicle from a local car Zeus. Any requests? Get four to five hours to purchase a vehicle at a traditional car dealership. And in most cases, little pink half house. time is spent negotiating on the houses. trade-in. You can think about selling you got it, sir. Your own. <laughs> that could take you anywhere from a month to a month and a half. Longer if it's not priced according to the market or if a listing isn't eye-catching. It could be stressful. Go to carzeus.com. Simply put, upload your vehicle to their website. Take you about three minutes. You'll be connected to one of their agents via text message. They'll then make the most accurate offer and either come to you or you go to them. They do a quick 15-minute inspection, sign a couple of documents. They'll give you a check on the spot. Carzeus.com. C-A-R-Z-E-U-S.com. He looks like Brandon with a beard. <laughs> dark beard. Did you see him? Mm, that guy? Mm -hmm. I yeah, I guess Brandon. a little bit. His eyes? Yeah. He would exactly like that show. He did. look like a guy on this show oh, called... Oh, yeah, um, right. Called, um, I can't remember the name. It's okay, we're live. I know, I, <laughs> I know, so that's why I'm not remembering your name. <laughs> <laughs> started a, well, I started a fire with one match, or two matches, I guess it was, <laughs> two matches, just to see if I could create a big could fire. Do it, just mm -hmm. to see if you could do it, and could you do it? Mm -hmm. Was it hard? You had to move things around and make sure, I mean, in fact, I, no, I did, I did one really well, and it had cedar and all that just laid out in planks and lay over and it just took off. But the other one I did just kind of real simple to mm -hmm. see how it would work. It was a lot harder, but I still got, <laughs> still got it started with one match. Didn't use any paper or anything. Just use small little kindling and mm -hmm. try to build it up to bigger stuff. Mm -hmm. It can be fairly comfortable in the woods if you, and they're in the desert. Mm -hmm. And they are just um, trying to to keep warm in the, in the keep shaded in the in the heat of the day and then warm at night because it gets so cold in the deserts. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. The temperature change. And you know why? Why the change is so great? Why? Because deserts don't get much rain, right? Mm -hmm. And that means there's not very many clouds in deserts. Mm -hmm. So that means that the, the heat of the earth escapes so fast into the sky, it does not keep, clouds keep, keep heat down. Okay. And so, so during the day, no clouds doesn't shield you at all mm -hmm. from the sun, and at night, it lets all the heat that was on the earth go right up into the atmosphere and doesn't keep it lower, like a cloud level will keep that, keep it down 10 or 15 degrees warmer. Yeah. So you're gonna be anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees colder on a uh, cold night in a, in a clear sky. And deserts almost always have clear skies. He's trying to. Yeah, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's a hard ladder, isn't it? Hungry? You're hungry. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get something. <laughs> but at least I'll enjoy it more because I'm really hungry. Mm -hmm. What's next? Nothing? Nothing.
you can start our last music at one minute before, exactly one minute before, okay, on the last song. You weren't talking in your mic. I just wanted the last song to be uh, to be one minute, right at one minute before we start. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the KM Builders <laughs> Remodeling and Design Show. Dad was doing some funny stuff before. <laughs> Sorry. With his mic. For you on Facebook and Instagram, you uh, you didn't get to hear the music there, but he he played a nice song for us. <laughs> but you so. got to see Dad. Trying to funny. talk, yeah. It's always changing. Oh my Something's goodness. Something's always changing. So we are live at 737-1200. We would love to have you call us if you have a question about remodeling or the process or don't want to make a mistake. We can help you there. Mm -hmm. We are talking about home maintenance and we've covered um, fireplaces and chimneys, wiring, smoke, smoke alarms, locks, weather strips, garage doors, these things should be maintained annually, and we thought we'd do y'all just a little reminder today on that. Uh, some other things that definitely need to be looked at every year is gutter repair and cleaning. You need to clean your gutters really well, and then you need to repair them for leaks. And some of these spray sealants will work if you do them annually. They'll keep little pinholes from getting worse. Uh, it's good to just clean them really good, scrape them out, get get the debris off of it and get it to where it's stable. Get down to bare metal and then spray a seal on it. And that'll usually last you at least another year. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good thing to do. Otherwise, you're gonna end up re replacing your gutters. And of course, a lot of people don't realize that gutters really do a good job of protecting the foundation from excess moisture. So they're a good thing. But so often gutters are neglected that they cause a roof rot. They rot the fascia, they rot the decking, they get up inside the roof, the uh, water backs up and it starts doing a, a nasty job to your to the eaves and soffits need to be replaced. So gutter maintenance is important. And important. They're good. Some people just say, well, I'm just I'm tired of my gutters creating rot, so I'm tearing them down. Well, that doesn't solve the issue of foundation movement. And a lot of folks don't have foundation moving, but a lot of people do in San Antonio. It's known for, for foundations moving a lot. And when you have water coming off of your roof edges, your eaves, you get an excess amount of moisture right there at the foundation, which means you're gonna have an excessive amount of movement in many cases. So gutters do their job, but you have to maintain them. And they're, they're, I recommend them, but again, if you're not going to do them yourself, have someone professionally clean them and repair them annually. Locks and deadbolts, all that stuff, you know, you don't want it to fail you when you need it most. Another good thing to do at this time of year is to do deck repairs, maintenance, uh, painting and staining of fences. All of these things need to be maintained and a lot of folks just don't do it because they don't see it rotting. But fences rot. If you don't use a good stain on a fence or a deck, it's, gonna, it's going to allow moisture to get into the edges. The edge, particularly the edge on the, what we call the short side. There's four edges to every board, right? Mm -hmm. The two long sides and then the two ends. So on the ends is where stuff wants to rot because that's where the, the cells are in the wood. It will suck the moisture in and it won't get out quickly because it can't evaporate. Usually it's touching the ground if it's a fence board or if it's a deck board, it's butting into another board. And so they don't dry out well, and they, it's exactly the way the tree wants to originally pull their moisture up to feed itself. So that's the way the, the way the cells are stacked. That'll pull that moisture in further and further every year. The way that you avoid that is, how do you think, Morgan? Seal it. That's right. Well, <laughs> sealing it is, is, is good, but a lot of sealers that people use are just so thin that they'll, they'll, they'll be gone in a few weeks or months. Oh. So if you use a stain that penetrates the wood and goes deeper than just the surface, you can actually prevent moisture getting in there a lot longer because it stores it in the cells of the wood. And you need something that penetrates it deep into the wood and oils it so that it repels moisture more naturally rather than just trying to coat the surface. Like you can't get to the bottom of your boards if they're on the dirt mm -hmm. and you can't get in between your boards very well. 
on a deck board if they're tight. So what you want to do is get that stain and that sealer to penetrate. And the one I recommend is Ready Seal. You can buy, now buy it. Homeowners can now buy it at Home Depot and Lowe's. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, use Ready Seal. It gets really deep into it. That's why our fence is like, I don't know, 15, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And it still looks awesome because we've always used Ready Seal on it. And, and it'll really, really hold up. And we've got clients that have had decks for 15, 20 years that are still maintaining their, their um, decks with this product really well. And they're not getting any rot. Oh yeah. I mean, so occasionally beautiful. you can get a board that's just bad, but so these are some of the clues and hints we have for you, and we have a lot more about technical remodeling experience on our website at kmbuilders.com, and you can call us anytime to schedule an appointment at 680-5626. That's 680-KMCO if you want to remember it and you're driving around, because I would love to meet you. I would love to schedule an appointment to talk to you about your project, what it costs, what, what you haven't thought about. And I know Morgan would love to go out and meet you about halfway during the project. Mm -hmm. Check it out. And go to our website and you can sign up for our newsletter at friends at kmbuilders.com to see our new projects and read our blog. Yeah, because Morgan goes and films them with Justin and takes those photos and she wants to take one of yours. And she wants to show you the before and after. I want to show you that too. So look us up at kmbuilders.com. And remember, we have designed the experience so you can experience the design. Thank you for joining us on the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show.